Okay. I want to welcome you all to, to uh, Responsible Government Coalition's press conference. Crime should not pay in SA. Crime should not pay in SA. I'm Patrick Bondo with Responsible Government Coalition, actually representing San Antonio Family Association. And we are here to share with San Antonio what's truly happening behind these walls, the negotiations, the deliberation. And it's time that the city of San Antonio come to realize they cannot comply with criminals. It's an imperative for the future of San Antonio that we have laws on the books that govern us, that guide us, still allow us freedom and liberty. At the same time, if laws are broken, if just laws are broken, there's accountability. When there's no accountability, Mayhem, anarchy will all grow. We already see a rising crime rate. And so we're here to encourage the city council and the mayor to refrain and avoid from ratifying the so-called justice policy, to not put it on the May 6th ballot as a charter amendment ballot measure because it breaks Texas laws, the Constitution, statute, in local, local government code. So if you would, let's begin as we do all our press conferences in prayer. And we ask for the one triune God to be with us and guide us. Because blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. As it says in Psalm 106.3, we stand before you, Holy Spirit, conscious of our sinfulness, but aware that we gather in your name. Come to us, remain with us, and enlighten our hearts. Give us light and strength to know your will to make it our own and to live it in our lives. Guide us by your wisdom, support us by your power. For you are God, sharing the glory of Father and Son. You desire justice for all. Enable us to uphold the rights of others. Do not allow us to be misled by ignorance or corrupted by fear or favor. Unite us to yourself in the bond of love. To keep us faithful to all that is true. As we gather in your name, may we temper justice with love. So that all our decisions may be pleasing to you and earn the reward promised to good and faithful servants. We ask this of you who live and reign with the Father and the Son, one God forever and ever. Amen. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Our Pledge of Allegiance is, uh, you can see the flag up here. And, uh, here we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. United States of America, and the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. I don't see a Texas flag. Oh, we do see it. I see a Texas flag right over here. And uh, if you don't know your Texas pledge, I'll lead you there. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. Without further ado, I'd like to invite up our first speaker today is Bishop Charles Flowers with Faith Out Outreach Initiative in San Antonio Black, White, and Brown. Pastor Charles has been a stalwart in standing and educating and fighting for good in the city of San Antonio. And he is able to share with us not only what's going to happen in the minority community, but in the, the Christian community of San Antonio. Please welcome me, Bishop Charles Flowers. Now here's a recent uh, controversial question. What is systemic racism? Let me offer a definition. Systemic racism is when the features and factors of an established system favors one people group and penalizes another. I'll repeat it. Systematic racism is when the features and factors of an established system favors one people group and penalizes another. This justice policy is an example of systemic racism. It seeks to system systemically establish an environment in which minority small businesses and communities can be further ravaged and dismantled. Thus favoring the decisions of investors and community developers to stay out of these communities and favor the less racially diverse areas. Just as other city ordinances of the past 
this so-called justice policy was not formulated or, or articulated at the city government level. Instead, it was a part of a statewide strategy written by an activist, Austin-based group called Ground Game Texas. Ground Game Texas is funded by Act Blue, which is a national organization. They are simply working with a complicit city council and district attorney, which they helped to put in office to begin with. The only thing required for evil, like this falsely so-called justice policy, to triumph, is for good people to do nothing. So I appeal to the good people of San Antonio to say no to this injustice policy. Should it, should it make its way? Thankfully, I didn't put my pad on that. Should it make its way to the ballot in May of this year? Calling this proposed policy the justice policy provokes the hearts of those who desire to see more justice and to support it. But this is very intentional. It is a modern ad ad adaptation of a long ago strategy used by the Greeks, which we have come to know as the Trojan horse strategy. It is presented as a gift to be received only to later have an army of trained warriors climb out from their hiding place inside the gift to wreak havoc upon our city. But good people of San Antonio, I believe you are smarter, more sophisticated than the pushers of this policy would give you credit for. Stand for racist, stamp out racism in City Hall. Support our police and send this injustice policy package. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bishop Charles Flowers. Sorry about the stand falling on you there. It wouldn't be a great press conference if it wasn't a challenge. So next, I'd like to, well, I want to, we were going to have David Moore, retired police assistant. Retired SAPD officer David Moore come up and join us. But unfortunately, David has had a death in the family and has had to leave town for a couple days. So please uh, pray for uh, David Moore and his family as they deal with an untimely human death. Next, I'd like to welcome up a gentleman who has been active in the public square since the 1980s with Ronald Reagan. Please welcome me, the El Conservador, George Rodriguez. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank Patrick for putting this together. We desperately need more information to be out there because I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, the media is very friendly. The media is very, very friendly to the left. They're certainly not friendly to us. Every time that there is a press conference for the left, they're always there, and they are always quoted. But somehow the media, you guys, never find time to find a conservative to give the other opinion. So I don't know if that is by intention. No, yes, I do. I think it's by intention. I think we have seen that, particularly in the local media. Y en español también, porque aquí estamos para hablar en español. Let me tell you that this justice policy, this so-called just us policy, and I'm going to be very, 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 very logical. I don't know if that's possible for the left and the liberals to be led to be logical. But I will tell you that if you reward, if you excuse bad behavior, what do you get? More bad behavior. What do you get? More bad behavior. I mean, really, think about it. And that's just logic. But of course, that is lost on the media and the leftists. The justice po uh, policy is going to, uh, charter rather, is going to do nothing more than encourage more bad behavior because it's going to excuse it. And it is excused already by that district attorney, that George Soros funded district attorney. It is already, ex it is already excused because of race and because of income. That's the fact. And when you do that, my friends, what do you think you're going to have more? We have a city council person in there that has said that they don't want a recent study that was done on crime to reflect anything as to which neighborhoods where it happens. Why? Because the truth is going to come out. Heaven forbid. 
The issue again, my friends, is we're going to create a sanctuary like in San Francisco, like in Los Angeles, where bad behavior is tolerated. Where bad behavior is tolerated. And who suffers? The people. Law lawful citizens suffer. <coughs> Businesses suffer. That's who suffers. The very people who pay the taxes. Oh, everybody pays taxes. Not like we do, I guarantee. Not like we do. There is a situation also where uh, they are they are claiming, I want to be sure that I'm not getting shot at, because that happens in the city, I don't know if you know this, almost daily. Tell me, tell me that that's not true, especially at pagan and s The fact of the matter is that we're, they're going to try to uh, minimize punishment for marijuana, and they're going to push for legalization of drugs. Okay. Have you seen what is going on in California, where they have marijuana farms? Have you seen what's going on there? Have you researched it? Heaven forbid. But the cartels are moving in there. Again, when you encourage and justify bad behavior, what do you get? More bad behavior. No kidding. <coughs> the homeless problem. Everybody's screaming, yelling at Michigan over at Michigan State Lansing because there was a homeless person, again, that went a homeless, mentally ill person <coughs> that used a gun, and they're blaming the gun. I have guns at home. None of them have ever shot anybody. The fact of the matter is, again, my friends, is that we have to do something about people who cannot control themselves. How about that? How about that idea? that again how does that help a person if they live on the streets and they are incapable of taking care of themselves how does that help them oh it's not humane for the government or for anybody to hospitalize them. the cartels my friends we have an open border thank you mr biden we have an open border they caught recently an Iranian on the terrorist list about two weeks ago. How should we feel about that when we've already got homegrown criminals? How should we feel about that? Drug use in the, in the, in, in the parks, because we're going to provide needles, we're going to provide all sorts of assistance, again, to justify bad behavior. My friends, this Justice Charter is bad news. Like Reverend Flower said, it is a Trojan horse. They have thrown all sorts of things in there about abortion, about drug use, only so that they can get the number one thing that they want, which is a Justice Czar who will be able to punish the police. Will be able to punish the police which is part of the national movement of these leftists to get rid of left to get rid of local police officers so that they can establish national a national police. Oh, because that works very well in East, in East Germany and in the Soviet Union. My friends, I don't want to say any more. I said enough. Please tell your friends. And if you're with the media, give us equal time. I don't know if the current knows that, how to do that, or the Rebar Report, or whatever they're called now, or KSAP. But if, you, if you're going to ask a liberal anything, ask us as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, George Rodriguez, El Conservador. We've had a change in our um, video. I don't see Amanda here, and um, Amanda Vieri, Vieira. Uh, but we're uh, glad to have with us in her stead is Miss Betty Eckert. Miss Betty Eckert is a longtime resident of San Antonio and represents older Americans in Barry County, and over 250,000 of them. And uh, she has a few words she'd like to share with us. Please welcome me, Miss Betty Eckert.
We have a quarter of a million seniors in Bear County. We have a problem with seniors that have absolutely have a nutrition problem. We have a problem with safety. Our seniors need to be saved. For goodness sake, help our San Antonio Police Department to have more officers to take care of the seniors. Let's go at our attention to our children. We need to always kind of welcome our children. They're not new. Help us to go to the land. I don't know what to tell you other than a quarter of a million seniors, not enough police officers, not enough police officers, not enough patrols. We're doing nothing. We must do something. Help us. Help us, San Antonio. Help us, Mayor. Help us, City Council. Help us, elected officials. That's why we elected you. We elected you to represent us. Represent us now. Thank you. Thank you, Betty Eckert. Let's talk about that real quick. How important it is for the city of San Antonio, all the mayor and ten city councilmen, while elected by constituents, they serve the people. They do not serve administration of the city of the city of San Antonio. They're not beholden to the city of San Antonio, they're beholden to the people who elected them. How crucial it is for the mayor and city council, other than Jalen in District 2, Jalen McKee Rodriguez, who's been very outspoken about his favoritism of this so-called justice policy. The other 10 need to speak up. They need to tell us whether they are with the justice policy or are with the citizens of San Antonio and public safety. It's high time that they do it before they make their vote tomorrow. We'll see when they ratify the vote tomorrow in a session of city council if they decide to put on the ballot. Please welcome with me legal counsel for the San Antonio Family Association, Mr. James Murphy. Thank you very much, Patrick. I want to talk about something a little different. You've heard from some folks about the negative harm that the Act for SA Charter Amendment will do turning this city into another Portland or Seattle. But that's not what interests me, and that's not why I'm representing the San Antonio Family Association. What I'm equally concerned about, and frankly should concern you more, is the climate of corruption and arrogance of the City Council of San Antonio and the way they've handled this measure. First of all, I want to say no one here is opposed to ballot initiatives. No one here is opposed to the public making their voice known. Heaven knows that's the only way, apparently, you can get this city council to do anything that their paid consultants and those who pay their wages and their campaigns tell them to do. We're for ballot initiatives, but there's a problem with this. You've all heard about, well, you know, it's, it's complicated, but it's worse than that. It was funded from outside this city, outside interest. You know how much it takes to put a ballot initiative together? Minimum of half a million dollars. Where did the money come from? Why is no one asking that question? Yes, they find a few, a few poor people to go collect signatures, whether they're bogus or not. And I suspect out of the 38,000 who signed it, perhaps a good half of them were what are known in law enforcement as crackheads. Well, I'm sorry I'm insulting crackheads, but each one of those 38,000 people who signed it are worse. I suspect many of them said, hey, this legalizes marijuana and didn't even bother to read it. And that's the problem. It's too complicated for the average person to really gather. And there's no way the way signatures are collected now to make sure that they've actually read it or that anyone who votes on it will have any idea what Section 171 will add to the San Antonio Charter. But again, it gets worse. Do you think our city councilmen care about this charter amendment? Heck no. Their goal is to appease 
those 38,000 guys so they can show up with a poor, deluded fools who signed that charter amendment and say, hey, I'm with you. Meanwhile, they'll be at the Argyle or Club Road or any place where their rich, money-grubbing commercial real estate donors meet and say, hey, yeah, like we're not going to let this get on the ballot. We'll blame the San Antonio Family Association and their allies for its yeah, defeat. Like no. The truth is years. that the city council had an obligation to speak on this. And I'm going to address on the one most critical issue. It's a man named Andy Segovia. You know him, he's your city attorney. I suspect, uh, I can't imagine he was hired on merit. Maybe that's a do that he went to Central Catholic and was friends with a lot of high place people. But he told my client, via Councilman John Curry, that he couldn't comment on the Charter Amendment. He was advised by counsel. I wonder who that is. If he really said that, if Andy Segovia said that, he should be fired. I'm telling you as a lawyer with a 40 years plus experience, it is the duty and the responsibility of your elected officials to take a stance on anything that might come before the council. These men are hiding behind a charter amendment so that they don't have to face the public. We are sick and tired of this. Those who are challenging this charter amendment in court You've heard about that. It was on the front page of today's paper. God bless them. But if they don't succeed, we have to vote against this charter. But by God, we must make every single councilman own his vote. And if he doesn't, vote him out. We cannot tolerate council members that will allow a measure of this significance and impact to go through without their endorsement. Again, if you have any legal questions about the matter in the background of law, I'll be happy to answer them right now. I'm turning it over to the real people who matter, the citizens of San Antonio. Thank you, Jim Murphy, James Murphy Esquire. How important it is, we realize that this is not a single issue policy. The justice policy is multi layered, about six to be exact. The argument Andy Segovia said that Jim Murphy just alluded to is that while there, he certified it, none of them comply with state law. You have decriminalization of theft up to $750, decriminalization of graffiti up to $2,500 per incident, decriminalization of abortion, while the state laws clearly are for protecting women and children. You have the decriminalization of marijuana and other controlled substances. You have the creation of a justice director. George R. Reeves referred to him as a justice czar, an appropriate term because that person is not supposed to have any law enforcement background whatsoever, but they're going to determine justice on people who have received a, a citation. They haven't been arrested anymore, they're going to receive a citation. And who is that justice policy director supposed to coordinate with? and comply with and consult with the same people. The same people who put this justice policy together, Act for SA, Ground Game Texas, TOPS. They're all left-wing radical organizations. And then, if the San Antonio police officer decides on his own because of justice to investigate abortion crime, there's potentially criminalization of that act on San Antonio police officers. God dare them. This is not a single issue policy. The Texas Local Governance Code is very clear. Any charter amendment must be, shall be a single issue policy. This is not a single issue policy and therefore, the city council should not ratify it or put it on a ballot. If they do, they're subverting their authority as elected representatives to, to represent constituents. I'd like to welcome up Texas Action Pack with Weston Martinez. If you would, he's been so kind to hold the stand where he, uh, it's the most humbling thing I've ever seen Weston do. So, uh, 
We, uh, we're grateful for it. Thank you very much, Weston. Please welcome Weston Martinez, former real estate, Texas real estate commissioner. God bless Texas. Patrick, I'll get you one of my new uh, shampoo bottles called the Carometer, so that way you two can have a uh, pair like Weston Martinez. Thank you. Look, here's what we're talking about, folks. Now, these people didn't drive down here after, despite the traffic that we're still stuck in in San Antonio. Hey, City Council, why don't you focus on getting us stuck out, out of the traffic we've been stuck in for the last 20 years? Yeah. Why do you want to keep taxing us out of our homes? You know, these people are here today. They're not paid lobbyists. They're here because they want representation to truly happen. This is an unjust, this is not justice, this is unjust. When you are going to allow criminals to get out of jail free, you are creating an unjust law. And in this case, it just represents another political football on the field of city council. We saw it with an NDO when they had the non-discrimination ordinance put together, which actually was a discrimination ordinance. And I'll tell you, one of the things they did, you guys will love this, and Ron Nurnberg was part of this book, they removed trans people from that vote, from that ordinance. Now, why would they remove that group from the ordinance related to the NDO. I thought they cared about the LGBT community. Oh, why? Because they wouldn't pass. That's why. And this particular situation is another example of another political football that these people really don't care about getting done. Because at the end of the day, the state of Texas has ruled on this. We have a state with a city, not the other way around. And I tell you, I tell people that I'm from San Antonio, the actual uh, home of voter fraud. That's right. We know about Joanne Ramon and all of the ballots that took place in the cemetery on Roland Avenue. We know about the voter fraud that took place that made national news when Project hey, Veritas did an investigation for just a while back <coughs> that I was an active part of. And those people had a hand in over, in over hundreds of thousands of mail by mail, mail out of ballots across the state of Texas and in San Antonio as a specific hub. No, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot trust what this council is putting together. And there is multiple legal consequences that are becoming out of this. Some of them have been stated today. Others will be stated after today because we don't want to show our hand. But as we move forward, the citizens of San Antonio have a new wind that's blowing through the city of San Antonio. Just like we feel this wind today, there is a new wind of true justice and it's gonna be at the ballot box. It's gonna be by those citizens that have been taxed out of their homes. It's going to be by those citizens that are stuck in the same traffic that they've been stuck in for the last 20 years. And these city council members, they will know that not only are the eyes of Texas upon them, but the eyes of God are upon them. And they better look out because there's going to be a reckoning. And this is just the tip of the spear. God bless you guys. God bless Texas. And God bless the Alamo City. Thank you, Weston Martinez, former real estate commissioner of Texas, Texas Freedom Pact. I want to talk real quick about the bias of city mayor and city council because in 2018 the firemen put together three propositions a b and c to put on the ballot in november they did so successfully they collected 20 over 20,000 signatures per petition they were all single issue petitions what happened right before that the city comes out in opposition the big wigs in the city create a pack, stuff it with a million dollars. All the big city contractors stuff it with a million dollars to help go to propose go vote no against propositions A, B, and C against the against the firemen and the coalition, the responsible government coalition. Particularly in regards to Proposition A, the referendum initiative change, it would have been much more reasonable for citizens to respond to bad votes by city council. What happened right before that in August of 2018? The city council was also presented with about 100,000 signatures from TOPS for a petition called Employer Paid Sick Leave. Employer Paid Sick Leave mandated, mandating employer paid sick leave to the private businesses of San Antonio. Now I'm constable, another act that was against the Constitution of Texas. It's not the first time that the mayor and city council, majority city council, were on council at the time in 2018, August 2018, including Ron Nuremberg, John Courage, Manny Pelias, Manny Pelias being an attorney, and actually said, this is unconstitutional, but we're going to vote for it anyway. That's exactly what they did 
they went on and voted for it and passed it as an ordinance because under the guise that they were pa if they passed it under an ordinance, the employer paid sick leave, that they could manipulate the language and change it. Whereas on a, on a ballot measure, as a charter amendment, they wouldn't be able to do that. It would be restricted from, from changing unless the will of the people didn't, uh, voted for it. So instead of having on the ballot with the free fireman's proposition, they voted on it as an ordinance, passed it, violating the state constitution, knowingly. And they did it anyway. Thankfully, the Texas Supreme Court struck it down by not hearing the case, going with the lower appellate court, and where it said it was unconstitutional. This shows a pattern, a history, with, under the administration, the Mayor Ron Nuremberg administration, of doing whatever they want to do. They'll use the law as an excuse when it suits them, and they'll law, use the law as an excuse when it doesn't suit them. It is biased, it is favoritism, it is against the will of the people, it is against what's good for the people and the good will of the people. It is, this is tyrannical. It is tyranny that is governing us. So we have to know, we have to educate. They will most likely vote and ratify the vote in the morning to place the justice policy, so-called justice policy on the ballot on May 6, 2023. And we have to get out and organize and vote against it. Please welcome with me to give us a, a close, some closing remarks and a closing prayer by the Clay Hunt. Thank you, sir. God bless the city of San Antonio and her people. I've long been a citizen of this city. I came out of Del Rio, Texas. And some people down there, they tell me, Father Clay, don't forget about the poor people. And in fact, that's what we're always about. That's what the Lord would call the Anawim, the little people. And unfortunately, bad behavior from people like the mayor of San Antonio and the city council most oppress the poor people. It's true that these things that they call the justice policy are absolutely unjust. And I want to give you a quote from a beautiful man that visited our city some years ago and he fought in the Alamo, the movie. His name is John Wayne. This is a quote from John Wayne. When you allow unlawful, unlawful acts to go unpunished, you're moving toward a government of men rather than a government of law. And it's absolutely true. I mean, we've seen all over the country and in many places in the world, lawlessness. And I truly believe knowing the sentiment of the people of San Antonio, many good, simple, God-fearing people, I don't believe that the citizens of San Antonio truly desire for these things, nor do I believe that they truly elected these officials. That's why I encourage you to consider and to smell into it. I believe San Antonio has been a prototype of voter fraud and voter manipulation for a long, long time, including to the city mayor and these city council persons. They're a bad lot. You know, I've heard the Greg spoke earlier of uh, the mayor and I know he fancies himself to be a martial artist of some sort. If he's of any substance or if he fought or sparred against any persons of substance, I can guarantee you he was sat on his backside many times. And like Mr. Martinez said, he's got a good one coming to him when the Lord backhands him for the oppression to the poor people. And that's why I encourage you, people of San Antonio, to rise up and to put things into order. And we're gonna make a little prayer here from the words of the sacred author. This will be Psalm 52. And we pray a, a blessing over our city of San Antonio that we love and cherish and over her beautiful people. And we ask the Lord not to forget the promise he made to us 
And in fact, to rid us of people of bad intention, such as these ones in power that we have today. Psalm 52. Oh God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Why do you boast of your wickedness, you champion of evil? Planning ruin all the day long, your tongue like a sharpened razor, you master of deceit. You love evil more than good, lies more than truth. You love the destructive word, you tongue of deceit. For this, God will destroy you, and maybe with a backhand, and remove you forever. He will snatch you from your tent and uproot you from the land of the living. May the Lord's blessing be upon the just. And on this day, we pray for the city of San Antonio and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To John Wayne and all those champions of old, remember the Alamo. Remember the Alamo. Thank you, Father Clay Hunt. We have just a couple minutes to go inside. So I want to encourage everybody behind me and everybody here. You have one minute to walk inside. Sign up to speak. When you sign up on your, in your name to speak to city council to right now for this B session of council, make sure you put a note in there. Vote against ratification of the so-called justice policy. Vote against ratification of the so-called justice policy. Leave them that message. And you're able to get your time or speak on your own. And so please join with me in uh, going inside city council. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I want to thank the public for being here and the press for being here. May God bless, and bless, and bless you. For more information, go to San Antonio. Com forward slash prop as in proposition. San Antonio Family Association.com dot com forward slash prop. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'm Patrick Gondola with the Responsible Government Coalition. May God abundantly bless you. May God bless Texas and San Antonio. Adios. Everybody hustle inside if you can.